my world. That's what I No, we're good. Well, um, is there an idea that comes out somewhere? Well, I have speakers here, but it's fairly now. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. Thank you. Thank you so much. St. Clair Shores area and picked up Tina Hargaden at her b and to bring her over here and, and then we're chit-chatting like, oh, wow, we got 14, yeah, 20, 20 more minutes to get going here. Um, so thanks for coming to my presentation. Uh, my name is Darren Way and uh, I've been teaching Spanish for uh, 14 years and uh, <coughs> I work in the Plymouth Canton Community Schools. Um, Aaron Paris is the president for this year and she works in the district with me. Um, and let's see, uh, yeah, so the session is called CI and Task Based Instruction, and uh, I don't, I never use my Weebly site, so don't bother going to that anymore. It's still, it's just still up there. Um, you know, last night I was still trying to revamp uh, what I was going to address um, today. A lot of times, what, what my presentations are kind of the same um, as, far, as far as um, it's anything that deals with comprehensible input, and um, so I. Uh, Let's see, I've been doing just a little bit about me. Uh, so I've been teaching for 14 years, and I went to Wayne State University, is where I did my undergrad, um, for my, and my methods classes 
and uh, I was fortunate enough to, um, my methods class dealt with uh, uh, Stephen Crash and the natural approach and, um, and things like that, whereas maybe certain methods classes that you've had, maybe it, you, you know, professors weren't addressing that stuff in their methods classes at your college perhaps. Um, and I know that's kind of a, that, that kind of happens, but uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, um, do that. And my, uh, when I was a student teaching, my, uh, my mentor, she was doing stories for her classes. And she, ended up, she was my old high school teacher, um, but she wasn't teaching using CI um, when I had her. And then four or five years later, I came back and uh, uh, student taught, and then she went on maternity leave, and then I ended up covering her class for five months. So that's when I first understood um, uh, about using CI in the classrooms for my methods class, as well as um, she, you know, from the time I had her in high school to the time I taught under her, um, she was transitioning into doing stories and uh, Blaine Ray and TPRS was a thing back in the early night, you know, the late nineties. And so, I, so basically, I've been teaching using stories and CI based my entire career. Um, and what else? But I'm always learning. I'm not, I'm, I'm not an expert. Um, I'm always trying to perfect what I do in class. Um, lately, a lot of things I've been doing is with the. Uh, I'm taking from Tina Hargit and her CI lift off a uh, YouTube page and listening to uh, T with BBP, talking L2 with BBP um, on Mixler um, every single Wednesday to learn about more second language acquisition and basically how to make, you know, class comprehensible input based rather than, um, you know, steering clear from explicit teaching and um, of the language and structures as well as, um, you know what, what many people what uh, what many people would say it's is it really communicative language teaching that teachers are doing with their students or is it how Bill Van Patten would put um, put it as just speaking practice so before I kind of talk about I think it's good to know my audience um, obviously to see kind of like um, where everybody stay you know where everybody is so if you could raise your hand uh, who's uh, um, who teaches a world language that's not Spanish or French? See, yeah, people always want to start with, you know, <laughs> we want to address them first, okay? And uh, French teachers, okay, German, said Ruth, uh, Espanol. <laughs> Obviously, right? Um, so, just to let you know, for those who don't, I'm a Spanish teacher, I've always taught Spanish. But everything that I do, and if I model a certain activities that I'm doing in class, I'm just going to keep everything in English. Or maybe I might do something in Spanish because it'd be my job to make things comprehensible in an activity that I do for people who don't speak Spanish. It's what I do every day. So, but for the most part, in, in past, um, I would have hands go up and teachers would ask me, hey, can you model in English because I'd be on a Spanish, Spanish tangent and I'm not being consciously aware of the Mandarin and German and anybody else who's not teaching Spanish. French, you could probably kind of, you know, figure it out, right? Um, okay, and my next question would be, uh, raise your hand, please, if uh, you are familiar. I would say that you've been using comprehensible input as the basis of your instruction for quite a while, maybe like five years or more. Okay, <laughs> so that, that, that is very good to know. Okay, um, maybe what about this year or last year? that maybe you're kind of tapping into things a little bit. Okay, all right, so that's good to know. Um, <clears throat> all right, so first of all, <clears throat> um, let me ask you this. Maybe you could turn and talk to somebody for a minute. Um, what, how would you define, uh, maybe you've been 20 seconds, how would you define, um, or think about if you don't want to discuss with somebody next to you, uh, what communication is? What is communication? <laughs> oh, I like successful. Yes. Successful is successful. Five. Four. Three, two, one. 
Hey, all right, points for uh, coming back. Uh, I do that with my classes every single day. Uh, and another thing I'm going to do is talk about like um, procedures with your kids that work very well, I believe, when you're trying to keep everything in the target language the whole hour um, and keeping them engaged. Um, does anyone want to volunteer like a little brief definition of what communication is, perhaps? I don't have to, but, uh, yes? Uh, receiving and producing information, an exchange of information. Receiving and producing uh, information, exchanging information amongst people, right? Okay. Well, I see yeah, people shaking their heads, nodding, sorry, not shaking. Okay. Um, well, the, the, um, and that's going to come up in the definition here in a minute. So second language acquisition is simply the process in which a person acquires a second language and does not require extensive use of conscious grammatical rules. It's organic. It talks, it's all about the input and putting meaning in the forefront in your instruction. Um, not to say you can't explicitly teach grammar stuff, we could talk about that with pop-up grammar um, and trying to have students notice um, features of uh, words. Uh, requires meaningful interaction in the target language, natural communication, which speakers are concerned not with the form of what they're saying, their utterances, but with the message they are conveying and understanding. Because that is the main thing that we do with language, right? We are listening and speaking to convey meaning with each other, not, you know, how, how, how we are pronouncing things and how we're structuring our sentences and communication, right? <clears throat> but yet, because it's a language, and I think that that's our main thing is to convey meaning in the language, but yet, um, a lot of times uh, people are putting in um, some sort of like, Talk, talking about the language versus using the language in meaningful context. Um, best method is by using comprehensible input in a low anxiety environment. Students are, you know, not anxious. You're you're being very you're building this community of students in class where all their opinions and what they say is valued. Um, in order to help you maintain yourself in the language. So CI, what is it? So CI drives language acquisition. Okay, how we acquire language. Students should be able to understand the essence of what is being said or presented to them in the target language. And we'll talk about how we do circling questions and things like that. Um, so I don't know where my communication one is. But uh, by definition, communication is the, um, the interpretation and uh, the negotiation of meaning with, couched in a communicative context. Okay. Um, and language that learners attend to for its meaning. So that's CI. Is it really communicative language teaching? So this is kind of like if people are wanting to transition. Um, for many years, I've done this too. In the last couple years, or I, the last, the first couple years when I started teaching, I was still doing storytelling, but I was still doing something where you see something in the textbook, like having students do A-B conversation roles based on pictures in the textbook is not necessarily communication. Um, so for example, uh, you know, look at your look at your friend and point to the picture and ask them if you know they went to the, they they like they're going to the following place this weekend. They're not going to this place this weekend, right? Um, so basically, it's just a speaking practice. Like, where are you going this weekend? I'm going to the movie theater. Okay, point to the next picture. Where are you going? I'm going to the park. I'm going to the church, and then and, and then it kind of gives you like a, a little model of saying um, to you know having them force output and come up with something else to say. Like, uh, oh, you're going to the park? Uh, um, me too. Or, how fun. <laughs> you know, something like that. So I, I'm sure you've seen this in a lot of textbooks, right? Um, right, ask your partner if he or she wants to go to the following places. Um, it's best not to use any communicative activity in the textbook. Um, basically, uh, you've heard about communicative language teaching. It's called CLT for short. And I'm talking L2 with BBP. His first episode this year was all about CLT and how publishers will end up, you know, taking the same text textbook and then put a communicative approach on the textbook, you know, or proficiency-based something on their textbooks. Um, and so he questions that. It's basically what it is is just maybe skill building and speaking practice, but there's no purpose there. There's no communication really going on in these activities in the textbook. And, I, not, not, and, and not just the textbook, but, and I've, and I've done this before, and I still kind of do this a little bit because I'm bound to a textbook curriculum. So, you know, they have these vocab lists and the grammar structures of every chapter. 
So I do the best I can to make it meaningful and create stories around them. Um, but I would be some, somewhat guilty of doing uh, a piece of paper, half slip of paper or full sheet in groups of two. And there's maybe, let's say, five questions, maybe 12 questions. So you want to get 12 vocab words in those 12 questions. And uh, you're just having them exchange, right? And it, 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 based on just a series of different things. It's not one topic approach. For example, I'm doing the house unit right now in the chores. And the question might be something like, uh, um, you know, like, do you dust your room? And they say, C, I dust my room. And you? Yeah, no, I don't. Next question. You know, back and forth, back and forth. And then the next question, uh, who cleans the kitchen in your house? You know, and then once again, my mom. You? Nobody. You know, whatever. You know. Back and forth, back and forth. And then what I would do is, after they go through all those for about five, six minutes for speaking practice, um, then we come together as a class, and I say, um, okay, number one, raise your hand. 